Okay, so looking at the group that we have, we have one family caregiver, some providers, some agencies, and children and adults. So fantastic. We have kind of a variety of people here, which is absolutely wonderful. So welcome on this very hot Friday afternoon here in Wisconsin. Um, today we're going to be talking about meaningful summertime activities and adaptations. Um, my name is Val Madsen and I am the Training and Development Specialist at Respite Care Association Wisconsin. And we do these monthly trainings. They're short, so about 30 minutes, uh, on different topics. So if you have any thoughts or ideas of topics you would want more information on, feel free to let us know. Um, and we're just really excited to be able to share information with you. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat um, and we'll go from there. So welcome. So today uh, we're gonna talk about meaningful activities, why they're important. Uh, we're also gonna have a very short conversation or some thoughts about age appropriateness because uh, that is an interesting topic that can be debatable. So we are gonna mention it briefly. Um, and then we're going to get into really what are some meaningful activities you can do at home or in the community, and then talk about different adaptations for a variety of different needs. So that is our game plan for today. So in respite, um, it is really important to have activities. Um, while the definition of respite is to give caregivers a break, it also should be seen as an opportunity to be able to provide meaningful activities for the people that you're caring for. Um, the reason for that is it helps to have better experience. It helps the individual you're caring for to uh, enjoy hanging out with you and want to be with you as a provider. Um, it helps to fill up the downtime. Uh, when people are bored, that's when there might be some challenging moments or when, you know, again, if you're bored, you aren't having fun. Um, and it also can provide an opportunity to build important life skills. So as we talk about different activities, it might be going into the community, but then you're also working on social skills. You're working on patients and waiting in the line. You're working on money management. You know, so there's all those different things that can be worked on within activities in the realm of respite. Um, so a lot of times people don't realize that everything they're doing is actually really good and really important um, in the world of respite. So age appropriateness. Um, no matter what age or who you're working with, it's important to think about just the appropriateness of the activity. Um, even if the individual has a cognitive delay, you can structure activities for that person's actual age. Um, also remember that uh, you want to take the person's interest when choosing the activities. Uh, talk to the care recipient, talk to the caregivers um, about what those interests are. And I mentioned earlier that this is kind of a controversial topic um, because there are some uh, caregivers or some families or some agencies that are very set on, I want it to be age appropriate. I don't want them doing something that is not for their age. Um, so an example I've seen of this before is um, someone working, someone who is taking care of um, an elderly individual, and that elderly individual really enjoys having a doll as a comfort item, um, but the agency or the caregiver is not okay with that. Um, so then they are very clear that they don't want that activity or any encouraging of that. Um, whether that's your view or not, is really uh, up to the caregiver. As a respite provider, it, it's something that you have to respect those limits and what's appropriate for that family. Um, with that, also you can provide a great conversation for with the caregiver, or if you are a caregiver, being open to um, flexibility with that. Um, I'm currently working with a family who has a fourth grader um, with autism and he really, focuses on kind of those toddler age, you know, um, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and um, Dora, things like that. Um, and parents really want to encourage him to have more interest so that he can connect socially with his peers. 
And so part of my sessions with him is really trying to build some of those interests, but I'm not necessarily gonna take away all of those other things. It just might not be a focus of our activity. Um, so really looking at, is it meaningful to the person that you're working with? What are they getting out of it? Um, is it a, does, does that activity meet not just their age, but their developmental, social, emotional, and physical abilities? Um, and so that's all I'm going to really kind of say about that. There can be a much bigger conversation, but do know that um, make sure that you're communicating with the caregiver so that there is good, good conversation being had around what the appropriateness is and what that caregiver wants versus what you are comfortable providing. So some at home activities. Um, try to figure out different things that you can do, um, you know, but also, again, talking to that primary caregiver, if you are the caregiver, making sure you're talking to the uh, respite provider, figure out what the interests and likes are for that care recipient. Um, find out if there's any activities that you want to stay away from because they either really don't enjoy it or it causes them to be too um, elevated that ends up putting them in a bad situation. Um, ask where things are in the house. So if you're doing in-home respite or if there's any areas of the house that are off limits, um, you know, if there's, find out if there's any routines or schedules that need to be followed just so that you are aware of the things that are going on. So some great at-home activities uh, that you could do is reading books, uh, obviously craft projects, anything like that, um, movies. Uh, iPads, computers. Uh, with that, though, be aware of any screen time limits or any issues that might arise with using screens. Uh, go outside, go for walks. Often, and, and we also feel better when we get exercise. So are the people that we're working with. Um, so just being outside, being able to move is really positive. Um, any board games, card games, those are all great things for downtime activities. Uh, cooking and baking. So let's work on some life skills. Um, you know, and be aware of food allergies, um, figure out if there's any restrictions in the kitchen, but having some cooking or baking activities is a great opportunity to really engage with someone and have a great product in the end that you can share. Uh, be creative, maybe it's play or dress up, um, spa days, different things like that. Uh, crosswords, word searches, puzzles, scrapbooking, um, housework, you know, so being able to um, do things around the house is a meaningful activity. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a recreational activity. It could be meaningful in other ways as far as daily living skills um, and really helping that individual participate in their day. Um, again, I think respite is focused on making sure the caregiver gets a break, but if we can add some meaning into the things that we do with the respite participants, that is really helpful um, and really helps everyone just get a better respite experience. So a little bit about screen time. Um, I work with some individuals that would be more than happy um, being in front of the TV or a tablet or online gaming, whatever it might be. Um, you do wanna try to encourage a variety of activities though um, and not just have the screen time. Uh, see if um, you, if there are any limits that the caregivers have, um, but also be willing to want to provide meaningful activities. It could be a very easy day if you're just sitting and watching TV, but that's not what you're there for. If you are a caregiver, make sure you let your providers know kind of your expectations. Uh, so if you do want them to engage in meaningful activities, let them know that the screen should be off throughout the session or whatever it might be. Saying that, everyone, including you and I, I need some downtime. Um, I think sometimes we forget that oftentimes we make requests of people, of people with disabilities uh, for them to be on task 100% of the time. And that's not, that's not doable. Um, I think it's very challenging. To, and even people without disabilities, younger children, um, we're always asking them to make good decisions, keeping their hands to themselves, staying calm, following through, especially if they're at school all day or at a work job all day. Um, they have to be so focused. Sometimes we need downtime. 
Um, I know I need downtime at the end of my day. I need some time to decompress and just veg out in front of the TV. Um, doing that, make sure maybe set a timer. So set some limits on those times so that they know that there's a clear end and let them know what's gonna happen next. There's some times where a care recipient's having a bad day and that's okay, or we're having a bad day and that's okay. Um, and so maybe screen time is the only thing that they want to do. Try to insert these short activities or do them alongside with screen time. Um, but know when to pick your battles. And then make sure you're just communicating with the caregivers that this is the case. Um, especially as we start looking at summertime activities, it's always great to get out and about uh, to experience new things. But for example, this week it's been 90 plus degrees with heat indexes closest, close to 100. That is challenging to be outside in, um, you know, especially for longer periods of time. So just be aware that you're gonna pick your battles and uh, figure out what, what makes sense for the situation. So community outings. Um, this is a great way to practice skills in different settings. Um, so again, we talked about um, having the individual be able to um, give money for tickets or food if you go someplace, um, having that interactions with others, experiencing new things. Um, I've worked with a lot of parents and caregivers that just struggle with taking the care recipient out in the community because it is so much work. Um, and I've had families say, I would love to take them to the park or to the zoo or to a movie, but it, it, it takes so much work on my side. I, I, it, it's just hard. Um, and that's okay. It, it is hard. Um, but as a respite provider, you're there for a short period of time you have the energy to possibly do some of these things. Um, one thing or things to think about is that because you're outside of a typical, your typical place, um, there are things that happen that you have little control over. Um, so make sure that before you decide to go on an outing that you really have a good relationship with the individual that you're working with um, and have a plan so that um, if something does happen, you you have an idea of what you're gonna do. So things to think about, be prepared, uh, pack a bag, you know, take a change of clothes, you never know um, what might happen. Uh, you know, have things that you might need. Uh, be aware of the places you're going. Um, is it a place that has long lines or crowds? Are the bathrooms accessible or not? Is there gift shops with or snacks um, and then what happens if you, let's say you didn't bring any money or you didn't foreshadow, there is a gift shop, but we're not going in it. We're not buying anything today. You know, and so now you have a meltdown. Um, how are you going to stay safe? How are you going to keep everyone else safe? How are you going to get out of that situation? So just try to be aware of the places you're going ahead of time and have a plan. Talk to, again, I, I say this almost every slide, talk to the caregiver. The caregiver go, knows the care recipient best. Um, and so talk about uh, challenges that they've had in the community before so that you can maybe foreshadow some things or figure out some ways to make that a positive experience. Uh, think about transportation. Um, I've had some respite providers that I've worked with that uh, was very surprised that the care recipient did not ride well in a car or kept taking off the seatbelt. Um, you know, so what does that look like? If you are a respite provider, what's your car insurance? Um, is that gonna cover that participant? Um, if you work for an agency, is there rules against transporting clients in your own car or do you have to use the caregiver's car or is that not allowed at all? So just be aware around transportation. Transportation has a lot of liability issues. Um, so just some things to think about ahead of time because there is the chance for a greater um, likelihood of something major happening, whether it's an accident, whether it's your fault or not. Um, you know, there's just that chance there. So different ideas for outings, um, taking a walk. We have so many great state parks and county parks in Wisconsin. Uh, so getting out into the community, finding some either accessible trails or um, good trails that are work well for the level of the individual that you are working with. Um, zoos, there are a lot of zoos uh, throughout 
the state. Um, it might be going to a restaurant. Um, I know one um, population I, or one setting I worked in, uh, one of our favorite trips was to go to Culver's and get ice cream. You know, that is a great opportunity to get out and about. It can be really motivating to get off a screen if you're working with someone who is struggling with that. Um, but to get out in the community, have those interactions, practice picking up your garbage afterwards, making your order, find, grabbing napkins, all of those things. Uh, find out what community events are in your area. In my town this weekend, there's a craft, a craft and vendor fair um, with food carts and music. So that would be a great opportunity to get out into the community. Concerts or movies. Um, I know a lot of little towns will do concerts in a park. Um, and at Granite, we're kind of coming to the end of that COVID time or things are starting to open up again. Um, so be aware with all of these things, there might still be COVID restrictions or know what they are um, because now we're excited to get back into the community. So some of those things I talked about might be challenges because there's more people out and about. And that's something I've noticed as well is that people are just out more. So be aware of that. Maybe planning a time to go when it's not as busy. Libraries um, are fantastic places to go. Um, though some libraries might not let people come and hang out for a while. You know, it might just be going in to check out a book and leaving. Um, but again, that's a great opportunity for you to have a library card or the individual that you're working with has a library card so they can check out books. Um, shopping, farmers markets are awesome and a lot of fun. So those are kind of a variety of different activities. Um, really, it's Things that you like to do anyways involve the person that you're caring for in. Uh, so now we're gonna move into activity adaptations. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to throw it in the chat. So with art, there are a lot of different adaptations that you can do. Um, a lot of times it's grips. Um, if you look at markers or um, paint brushes, they are really small and it can be really hard to hold um, that for individuals with more physical um, delays or even cognitive delays and not understanding um, the small motor, fine motor skills to grip um, small objects. Um, so figuring out how to have some of those grip holds. Um, maybe it's something you can make with clay or Play-Doh. There are a lot of sites where you can purchase things like that. Um, but that could be an opportunity for you to really um, see what you have around. You know, chalk extensions um, off a wheelchair, uh, that's more a specialty item. Um, sensory toys, uh, really using a fidget item to get, have the individual get through the activities. Uh, the fat handled paint brushes, again, more the gripping, because a lot of times that is what is a struggle. Big handed scissors, um, bigger handles on stamps, uh, paint dabbers is a great opportunity instead of paint or crayons. Um, it's a little bit cleaner, um, but just having the dabbers to do that or fingerprint paint brushes. So some individuals really don't like paint on their hands. So maybe it's using an adaptation like that. Think of other things you can do. Uh, paint with objects such as cars or dinosaurs, sponges, other things that interest that individual. Um, you know, I've we made like race road, race track roads and pictures by using a car that goes through paint and then um, putting it across the page. Um, using bubbles to make art, shaving cream, lots of other things to really engage the sensory opportunities along with the art opportunities. Um, you know, uh, especially individuals that might have a visual impairment, engaging senses in that. So that would be a scented markers. Um, the shaving green cream is gonna be very tactile um, and really allow for a different opportunity for um, that interaction. For sports and games, uh, think about modifying. There's a few different ways you can modify a sport or a game. Modification of rules, 
or boundaries. Uh, so a smaller playing field, a bigger playing field, not having out of bounds. Um, you know, again, the rules, whether it's um, so for volleyball, uh, being able to hit it a certain amount of times or not hit it a certain amount of times, whatever it might be if you are playing with the group, um, modifying the equipment that's used to do that sport. Um, maybe having a bigger ball, a smaller ball, again, whatever. And there's, I didn't go into a lot of specific examples for sports and games because there are so many. But if you just search, let's say you want to play basketball, you know, adaptations for basketball for and whatever disability, there are lots, there's lots of things out there. Uh, card and board game adaptations. Um, using a pool noodle. So going to the dollar store and cutting a pool noodle dough in half so it can sit flat, putting a slit in it, and now the cards can be held up without trying to hold them in their hand. Again, that fine motor skills. Um, having dice in a cup, having a big dice, that is something that I use quite a bit. Um, and then also for some individuals, uh, using switches. If it, that's something that you haven't really had experience with before, it's a really neat opportunity to see um, a different way for things to interact. Um, and oftentimes switches can plug into anything that has a port. Um, so there's electronic spinners, um, there's electronic dice rollers, um, and you just use the switch to activate that activity. Uh, Respite Care Association does have a Pinterest page. Uh, so pinterest.com slash respite care WI training. And there are a lot of posts of different adaptations. I would highly recommend that you take a look at those. Um, it also leads to some sites as far as how you get those different adaptations. Um, again, I didn't go into a lot of the sports and games just because there is such a wide variety. Um, we could spend all day talking about each individual activity um, and it may or may not work for the individual you're working with. So definitely do some digging into that. So really in summary, um, you wanna connect with the care recipient. Um, so as you figure out different meaningful activities for the summer, look at the resources in your community. Um, is it getting out to the local parks? Um, splash pads, that is for any age. I like going to splash pads um, because you don't have to worry about the safety of getting into a pool, but you can still cool off in the summer. Um, so splash pads, um, using um, the parks and trails, um, you know, maybe in looking at getting a trail pass for you or a park pass for you um, so that you're able to go into those places. Um, libraries. Libraries are free, you know, and they also have a movie rental section in most libraries. Um, so it might be engaging with your community environment that way. Um, filling that time and those activities with the participant is really important. Um, I know one parent that often says the highlight of her day is getting a picture from the respite care provider of something her and her daughter are doing together. And she loves that. That makes her heart swell. Uh, she just really sees that connection between the respite provider and her daughter. She knows her daughter is not just sitting and doing nothing. Um, as an adult with uh, cognitive disabilities, her daughter doesn't get a lot of opportunities to do some of these meaning meaningful engagement activities. Um, so as a respite provider, you're in a really unique position to be able to do these things. Um, so just really taking that, um, running with it, figuring out what works well for the person you are working with um, and adapting it for whatever uh, needs that they have. Um, and just be sure to plan ahead. Any questions from this group? Again, feel free to put it in the chat or if you wanna unmute, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask as well. My information is on the screen, so feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. Um, on our website, we also have um, a link to a variety of different free training opportunities um, if you are a respite provider and want some more information, but also these monthly minis. Again, we do uh, 
record them and they go onto our YouTube channel. So you're more than welcome to see past months. Um, we've really done a variety of topics, uh, you know, on social emotional learning. So very specific uh, things to more um, broad, broader uh, topics as well. So feel free to check that out. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Yeah. Do you have <laughs> this? Do you have this uh, uh, translate to Spanish? Me I, too. I love that. I love your presentation. I like to, you know, it's possible to share with me in Spanish. Uh, we do not currently have it in Spanish, but that could be something we look at. Well, um, in you can do. Can you share with me? I can send uh, someone to translate. So yeah, yeah, if, yeah, grant, I am. Grant, I can do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And whether you want the re, the video to translate or just the PowerPoint, either way. So yeah, we can chat later. I have your information. I prefer the video. The PowerPoint is more easy for the people to translate. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, please. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I will send that over to you, Hector. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Other questions that anyone has? All right, again, feel free to reach out. My email is on the screen. Um, otherwise, stay cool, enjoy your weekend, happy Friday. Um, and hopefully if the heat breaks a little bit for us, um, but have a wonderful weekend and um, we look forward to seeing you again.